Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. The song is titled, We Need to Love. And I believe from last month up to now, we're still in the mode of encouraging one another. Amen. So if you are with me, I'd like you to open your hearts tonight as I minister to you a song before the wind. Brother, say I won't help you no more. Why should sister say I won't talk to you no more? Don't you realize we're all a part of God's family in God's kingdom? Well, love is well. Why should brother say I won't help you no more and why should sister say I won't talk to you no more don't you realize we're all a part of this family in God's kingdom where love is where love family don't you realize don't you realize don't you realize we're all a part of this family praise the Lord <clears throat> So I aim to do it to the choir one day if the Lord makes provision. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we pray? We thank you, O oh God, for your word that makes us know that we are. We have come to Zion where the family of God is, where there are angels, where there are spirits that have been made perfect, where the saints are, O oh God, where there's rejoicing, where there's encouragement, where there's peace, where there's love, which never fails, where there's hope, where there's faith. We have come to the place of mystery, where there's small, where there's big. 
you, oh God, being the author of it all, we worship you. Tonight we worship you. You see, we have come to the place of love. We are part of this family, oh God. Let love permeate our hearts. Let love permeate our beings. Let love eat into our heads, our minds, our souls, our bodies. Because we have come to you, oh God. God of love. God of love. Let your love read our hearts of bitterness. Let your love read our hearts of selfish ambition. Let your love read our hearts of that which is not of you. But let your love come through, O oh God, and be our expression, and be our expression, and be our expression in our hearts, O oh God. Let our hearts bubble, O oh God, with love. Let our hearts have no chance to express any other thing but your love. Oh, yes, Lord. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the house of God, there are many types. Hallelujah. Apart from the physical beings that we have, where you can see different types of noses, different types of head, as big as mine, different types of styles. This morning when I was leaving home, my wife was talking about the colors I'm wearing. She said, hmm, that's what these colors here. Yeah. But praise the Lord, hallelujah. It, it says something, you know. We're all different, amen. We're all different. She said, oh, you should change it. I said, oh, that's okay. I said, I'll take a shirt. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to change into that shirt. So I, I donned the same colors. I just managed to tweak something a little bit. Hallelujah. But you see, blending is not an easy thing. Amen. Blending is like marriage. You meet from two different points and two different places. And that's how church is. The Bible says that church, marriage is like Christ and what? The church. Hallelujah. Two different people coming from different corners, different parts of the world. And for us, it's not just two. We are more than two. Hallelujah. In this place. Amen. So can you imagine a thousand people all coming from different places, all having different ideas, all having different likes and distates, all having different um, competencies, and um, all having, I mean, various things. Hallelujah. Blending is not easy. Hallelujah. It will take God. Hallelujah. The one who, the author of creation, the one who made us different. He's the very person who can put us together. Hallelujah. So this evening, I just want to share with you a few things about being able to work together. Hallelujah. So don't sleep on me. I hope the song did not soothe you to sleep. where love is turn to your neighbor and tell the person you are in the place of love amen turn to the other person and say you are in the place of love and i want to, you to turn to the person and tell the person thank you for making the effort to keep us together tell the person sorry yeah, and turn to the next person too and tell the person the same. Hallelujah. Yeah. Everybody is playing a part. Amen. And if you don't play a part, then you are scattering. Jesus said, if you are not adding, then you are doing what? You are scattering. Hallelujah. So everybody who has come today is helping to play a part to make us work together. 
Even those who have not come today, yes, they are helping us. Hallelujah. I mean, for some, it's not possible. For some, too, they want to watch football. So they stay. For some, too, for other reasons. Nevertheless, at the end of the day, you and I, whatever you are doing right now, I want to believe that you have a heart to work together to bring us um, to work well. Amen. If it works well, it's for us, it's for our good. Amen. Our children will come and enjoy what we have sown, what we have built. Hallelujah. And don't take that for granted. If you are only thinking about yourself, and so you will continue to walk in that bitterness, then you are making a big mistake. Because it's not just for you. You, are, you must think about your children's 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 children. Already some people have left the church when they could have made some good deposits whether by the fault of theirs or by someone else's fault. I don't know. So let's turn in our Bibles to John chapter 12 and verse 32. Jesus said, and if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. One of the first things that we ought to do to be able to help us to work together is to exalt Jesus. Hallelujah. Is to make Jesus the agenda. Hallelujah. Because he has said that if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. He will become the focus, the center. So he will draw all men unto him. Hallelujah. But if we have other things that are the focus, we'll be in trouble. Because whatever we magnify, that is what people will focus on. Amen. So in our various departments where you are, let Christ be the agenda. Hallelujah. Let Christ be the agenda. Let people know that if we are acting, it is because at the end of the day, we must exalt Christ. If we are singing, at the end of the day, we must exalt Christ. If we are leading, at the end of the day, we must exalt Christ. If we are marriage counselors, at the end of the day, we must do what? Exalt Christ. Hallelujah. If Jesus is the number one, he will do what? He will draw all men unto him. Amen. Whatever is magnified will be our focus. And I believe that we know the story of Jacob when he um, wanted to, the sheep to be able to, when he was, he was being cheated and he had to find a way to help himself and he got a revelation and he decided to make um, strips and put it um, somewhere so that when the animals are feeding they'll be gazing at it and when while they gaze at it what happened although they were not striped they were able to give birth to striped animals hallelujah in the same way if we make christ the focus and everybody is focusing on christ that is the main agenda before you know it we'll all be like who like christ hallelujah we'll all be like christ Our motivations will be right. Our ambitions will be right. Hallelujah. There will be no selfish ambition if we focus on Christ. Because while we focus on Christ, some transformation is going to take place. Hallelujah. There is no other foundation that can be laid apart from who? Jesus Christ. Amen. So, everything that we are doing in this place if i'm working in the office at the end of the day i should realize that christ must be exalted hallelujah in your workplace wherever you are whatever you do at the end of the day make sure that christ will be exalted hallelujah and that's going to show through your character that's going to show through the words that you say hallelujah that's going to show through how you relate to people hallelujah and probably you are a departmental head where you are the workplace 
how you relate to those people is going to determine who they see. Amen. Let's see what John said. 3.30. John 3.30. John chapter 3 verse 30. He said, He must increase, but I must do what? Decrease. Because the agenda was Jesus Christ. John was very popular before Jesus came. Hallelujah. But he changed everything and focused everyone on Christ. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God that was slain. Hallelujah. And then they asked him, and he said, no, Look, I must decrease so that Christ must increase. If everybody here is going to decrease, Christ will increase. Hallelujah. And we have to beat ourselves to watch Christ, to focus on Christ. Because there are attractions and there are many things that pull us away. From where I sit, I can see people scheming. People scheming to get to bishop. People scheming to get things done. I can see. You know, every human institution, there, there's politics. So. Every human institution. And sometimes I feel like I feel like maybe I should do a little little because at the end of the day I'm I'm the cushion. Most of the things they fall on my head. I thank God I have a cushion face. I realized that some time ago because everybody wants to <laughs> at the end of the day, Pastor Nana. So I thank God for a cushion face. Hallelujah. But we must all have cushion faces. Amen. Philippians 2.15 This is how Jesus had a cushion face or a cushion heart. Um, sorry, 2.5 Let this mind be in you which was also in who? In Christ Jesus. I said we are making him the focus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in oh people. Help me to preach now. Let this man you see, you see what you have done. But it's right. Let this man be in you. Hallelujah. So <laughs> oh, if you are clapping, clap now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Go on, please. Six, please. Okay. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. You know, God. You're all God. The Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are God. Hallelujah. So Jesus, to say that he was God, is equal. Hmm? It's not robbery. It's not like if you are not the general overseer and you want to be the general overseer, so when you go somewhere, introduce yourself as a general overseer of Harvest International Ministries. This one, that one will be robbery. But this one was not robbery. He equal to God. Hallelujah. But he had a certain mindset. In order for the three in one, the Trinity, to work together. Hallelujah. This is the mindset that Jesus had. He said, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And this is exemplary of our homes. The man is not better than the woman. Hallelujah. The woman is not better than the man. You may have educational heights and all of those things. But at the end of the day, yes, you may be equal in stature. But one person, out of a decision to obey the Lord, decides to be submissive. Hallelujah. So Christ was God or he is God in the form of God. And it was not robbery or anything wrong for him to declare that he was God. But, verse 7. 
but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men you know what it means jesus humbled himself to become man we are servants everybody say we are servants we are servants please turn to the person beside you and tell the person you are a servant i said point and tell the person turn to the next person to and tell the other person please pastors turn to the deacons tell them deacons turn to the pastors and tell them you are a servant hallelujah so he took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men now he says that but made himself of no reputation did that mean that he lost his identity no but it rather means that he knew who he was and was able to humble himself because he knew who he was hallelujah you have a sense of value but you decide you decide to be humble hallelujah there are headmistresses amongst us who are ashes hallelujah amen we have the head of the pharmacy unit i want to believe so in kolebu she's an asha hallelujah we have other mighty mighty people in this congregation i don't know of who are serving in the house but i must also say that there are some mighty mighty people who are not serving mighty people arise and save let me see all the mighty people in the house some people don't think that they are mighty oh i said let me see all the mighty people in the house yeah everybody is mighty hey do you know the weapons that you have the weapons of our warfare are not carnal they are more powerful than machine guns although if somebody brought a machine gun here right now you see the people <laughs> hallelujah please are we getting somewhere tonight so he being god did not hold on to that but he made himself of no reputation so that the work of the trinity could work can you imagine if jesus jesus has said <laughs> me and me god jimmy if he if he am i saying it right eh, because my god when i speak it things happen <laughs> forgive me reverend fitz is not here it's like when reverend fitz is speaking to you <laughs> hey he's there oh If I start speaking God right now, there will be trouble in this assembly. <laughs> if Jesus had stood there and said, Kwe, mimi yo nyamyo, na musine. Minko, minko kava inu. Eja, me bibia me yensu kava ipadi, eh? Minko. That would have been very serious. Abadi, I'm a monk called Calvary. Men get them with Calvary. Me, 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 Hallelujah. But he did what? He made himself of no reputation please let's be submissive in our departments you are a big man big woman or to use other you are a biggie man and biggie woman as reverend Fitz said the other day 
you are a biggie man, biggie woman. But please, humble yourself. Choose to be submissive. It is unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So that the work of God can go on well. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. My time is gone. The other aspect of this mind being in you. I want you to, maybe I'll not read it, but in John chapter 17, Jesus made a prayer for his disciples. He prayed for them and even prayed for us who were not present there, but who would believe. Hallelujah. If you know the scriptures that I'm talking about, you can put it there. John chapter 17. And you can look at some of the verses there. But guess what? While Jesus was praying for these people, he knew that Judas was going to betray him. He knew that Peter was going to deny him. He knew that all the disciples would run away and leave him alone. Do you think that that was not painful. If we are going to work well together, some people would have to sacrifice their interest. Sometimes it will call for your head. But you want the work of God to go on. You want the marriage to work. You want the relationship to work. You want the job to go on well. You want the business to go on well. So you are sacrificing. I know of a story. One of our pastors, I don't want to mention his name. He went to school, finished O levels. And then um, at, at that point, he realized that um, his dad had gone on retirement and could not take care of um, his siblings. So instead of him continuing, he decided that he was going to work and take care of his siblings so he worked worked he didn't go to university he worked helped them the people they went to university some went on to do masters and so on before he came back to himself and went on to be by that time he was grown he's one of our pastors not here though I don't know if maybe there are some people here like that. He sacrificed his education. I know of parents who are using their pension to pay their children's fees. Beloved, if it's going to work, then it's going to take some self-sacrifice. Hallelujah. And Jesus knew that this was what was going to happen. Yet he prayed for them. Why? He had faith. He had hope. He had love. He had some good expectation. Beloved, let us all have faith, hope, love, some good expectation for one another. We're all a part of this family. Are you with me tonight? If it will work well, my time is up. Is it? How many more minutes? Okay, so I'm just going to jump, jump. Yeah. So let's look at John chapter 17 and um, verse 20, I think. John 17, 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words. Let's go on. That they may be one as thou, Father, art in me. Oh. Please go back. As thou, the Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. That what would happen? That the world may believe that thou hast sent me 
Beloved, I don't know, you can title the message. I don't know what you titled, but our greatest challenge will be our greatest testimony. Hallelujah. And that greatest challenge is this that the world may be that, that they also may be one in us are you with me that is everybody's responsibility we have to be one sorry i'm pointing at you who am i pointing at <laughs> so i maybe i no yes this is good because when i do this i have three pointing at me amen that they may be one and the, because what that the world may believe because of their oneness our greatest challenge hello sometimes there's too much discord too much disagreement too much and it's all because sacrifice is not there hello everybody wants their interest but if you can sacrifice or i can sacrifice we will carry on we'll be able to go hallelujah it's our greatest challenge to be one one same mind same language same that's why they call them christians because they all look like christ but i wonder what testimony do we have of ourselves turn to the other person and say am i a christian oh turn to the next person too and say am i a christian I see somebody laughing. So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are one. And that's the challenge. We must also be one. Amen. So a few things that we should do to help ourselves and I see that God was doing it for Jesus God was giving Jesus assurances as he went along the way amen this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased listen to him then another one comes I will glorify my name I've glorified it and I will glorify it again hallelujah and the, there was also strengthening when after the temptation of jesus the bible says that angels came and strengthened him hallelujah when he was in the garden of gethsemane angels came and strengthened him so god was also working encouraging departmental heads we need to encourage our people or our bishops we need to encourage our people pastors let's encourage our people more than discouraging hallelujah i think that in africa our disposition is more towards pushing the negative than pushing the positive i don't know why our disposition seems to be like we push more of the negative than the positive but let's encourage ourselves let's encourage ourselves let's encourage ourselves do you know what when you look at hebrews chapter 12 hebrews 12 verse uh-huh see wherefore seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us yes go on 
looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Okay, I'm not sure if that's the verse, the verse I'm looking for is there, but there's this whole cloud of witnesses. I want to believe that they are urging us on. Hallelujah. I want to believe that they are urging us on. Anyway. So, the last point, and then we'll be done. It's a warning. It's a warning to the tears. The Bible talks about the kingdom of God being like a man who planted a seed and went to sleep. And then in the night, the enemy came and sowed some tears. So when they woke up, the servants told the master, Hey, master, you know what has happened? Somebody has come to sow tears in there and the master said is is the enemy he has come to suit so they asked shall we uproot them they said no if you do that you will hurt the proper one too so wait beloved you can easily be a tear i think tears are like weeds so to help the language a little bit tears are like weeds or maybe plants that squeeze other plants i don't know but tears are like wheat. Do not be a tear. Because you can be comfortable doing the things that you are doing in the midst of God's people. And you think that you got away. But a day is coming. So it's a warning to you. A warning to me. Whoever, don't be a tear. One of the things that the tear does, Proverbs chapter 6 the Bible talks about things that God hates. And I want us to read the last one. Proverbs chapter 6, I think, verse 16. Yes, these six things that the Lord hates, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Go down, go on. Go, 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 go. To the last of the Lord. Yeah, this one. So it says, God hates a false witness that speaks lies, and he that sows discord among brethren. You know, in all of scripture, or rather, let me say this this word hate is not used many times by God. Amen. Hate is a very strong word. If somebody tells you that I hate you, you have to be careful. Unless maybe the person loves you and is try, just trying to dodge the, the, the love. Those who have ears know what I'm saying. Okay. So God hates he that sows discord among brethren. So be very watchful and let this be a warning to you don't try to sow discord amongst leaders don't try to sow discord amongst friends don't try to sow discord among marriage partners don't try to sow discord among brethren because the anger of god will come and visit you this is god saying things god hates hallelujah may the lord grant us all grace so that we don't walk in that anointing of tears hallelujah but rather let us be the ones that will have the mind of christ amen amen i pray and hope that you have been blessed tonight there's still a few more but i can't preach all the word of god someone else will come and add to it may the lord's name be praised Amen. Thank you for listening to the message. 
visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org. Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.